Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Jumana Tarek Nabil Abdurazik. I'm studying for a master's degree in petroleum engineering at University of Houston, and I will be your moderator this afternoon. Today, we're pleased to welcome Dr. Mohamed Gharib, a very special guest from Egypt. Dr. Mohamed Gharib has a PhD in petroleum engineering, specifically in artificial lift production engineering and operations. Dr. Gharib is a technical director and business professional with over 34 years of experience in the oil and gas business, operations, management, engineering, sales, and teaching. Dr. Lili was the Eastern Hemisphere Technical Director at Lufkin, as well as the Regional Technical Director of the Middle East, North Africa, and Turkey at General Electric Oil and Gas. He then worked as Vice President of the Eastern Hemisphere at SSI Lift. He works as the Strategic Business Director for the Eastern Hemisphere a weather Ford and petroleum engineering professor at Future University in Egypt. And today he will continue to share with us his expert opinion on the latest artificial lift technologies. If you haven't already, please make sure to check out our previous sessions on Pi Petro YouTube channel and join our Facebook page, Arab Oil and Gas Academy, for the latest updates on our September and October courses. Please feel free to send your questions in the chat box and we'll answer as many questions as possible. With that, I ask you to give your full attention to Dr. Mohamed Gharib and help me in welcoming him. Please welcome one of my all-time favorite professors, Dr. Mohamed Gharib. Hi, Dr. Gharib. Thanks for joining us today to pick up where we left off in the artificial lift technology course. Thank you, Jumana. Thanks, Rotsina. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, we are uh, still continuing on our uh, main subject, artificial lift technology, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, this is a fundamental of artificial lift technology courses, you know, it's not an advanced course, it's not in details course. The main target of this course to give to you all the basics, all the fundamental of artificial lift, which allow you to work in any place worldwide, which allow you, if you like to do more researches, it can, can, it can help you and so on. Uh, as, as we are started, we started, we just, with this is agenda, general agenda, and we give some introduction about artificial lift and what the methods of artificial lift. We already covered in, in, in a very simple, very brief um, things about uh, reciprocating saccharide bombing system. Uh, maybe if there is a time at the end of, of this course, we can go a little bit more in detail in some failure analysis and I can, I brought already, you know, some pictures for you just uh, from real failures from the field and so if there is a time uh, in the last uh, webinar, we can show you some like that, you know, just uh, like maybe we can extend the time to be like an, an, an workshop, you know, just uh, in order to discuss all that. And we already started the last, last time was electrical submersible pumps and uh, we said what's the electric submersible bomb and what's the main component. And uh, this also today will try to continue on electric submersible bomb. Maybe you're not able to finish also all the subject, but however, you know, I'll try to do all my best to cover all the important uh, issues, all the important points related to this is, uh, artificial. As I mentioned before, the electric submersible bombing system, it's one of the main common known artificial lift system worldwide. When it's come to high volume walls, also always came to your mind the electric submersible bomb. It's really, it, it's, it's a very forgiving system, very flexible system. It system, you know, just can allow you to produce whatever you have. Also the technology, current technology changed the perception about the system, not only for high volume. Yes, it is the best for high volume. But due to current technologies, a perception for all type of artificial lift, such as this one, all, all, all the perception is known about electric submersible bomb just for high volume. Currently, you can use for 100 or 150 volts. All the perception about the uh, electric submersible bombing system, that's only require the rigs to pull under. And currently, there is a cable deployed. Technology, it's changed. You know, the envelope application, it changed and so on, you know, it's the same for sprocating bombing system, and so on. I will just review, have some quick review with you about what already we talked about, what the system, where is we are reaching, and so on. And we said that the system, all 
type of artificial lift have some chain connection system like like if one of the part of the chain broken the rest of the system not working or just the performance will be a very low for electric submersible pumping system the main component in the downhole remember this is a little bit different than the reciprocating sucker rod pumping system the reciprocating sucker rod pumping system the bulk component is the main cost of the equipment and the surface equipment 75 percent your capital investment, what you paid for the system, it's for the surface equipment. And uh, the electric submersible bombing system, it's vice versa. Because the main component is the downhole components. The 75% or more of your capital, more, maybe you can reach to 80% for your downhole equipment. And remember, it is the high percentage of the failures for artificial lifted walls is okay downhole because the main work is done down holes. The bomb is working in, in really in, in harsh environments. Different pressure, different temperature, different gas, uh, 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 different waters, uh, sour gas, sour water. There's a change in pressure, change in productivity, well condition and so on. Then you need to control your investment. You need to control your operations. Then you need to understand very well what is going on down hole. Since uh, the electric submersible bomb, the majority of the equipment or the bulk of the equipment is downhole, then we need really to understand very well how it's working, how it's connecting to each other, how it's the system running, you know, for, and, and what is the factor effect on the system performance. And, so. and we said, you know, for all type of artificial lift, heart of each system is the bump. For that reason, all of them start with the bump. Because the bump, it's generated the targets, what I need. The bump, it's just, as I said, generated two pressures or just help to have two different pressure down or one, one low pressure against the formation in order to allow you to produce your desired production. So production, what you already, your targets, you need to maximize or you need to optimize whatever you need. The bump below, the pressure below the bump, it is just, this is your intake pressures. You need to control your intake pressure based on that. There is several factors affecting or just, you know, pushing you how to control this one and what you need to control for this one. There is high gas, there is high sand, there is high viscosity. What, what you have down hole as a fluid, there is high waters. What type of reservoirs, you know, do I need to have too much depletion? Delta B across the reservoir. Do I need to keep some pressure against the reservoir? It is a depletion drive reservoir. It is a water drive reservoir. It's, it's not mean that I run artificial lift to produce and I just forget it, you know, I'm only running down holes just for the well. No, you need just to have a complete system cycles from reservoir to separators. Remember, artificial lift, it's the system which can deal and you need to understand very well from reservoir to separators. It's from reservoir because the intake pressure of the bump is bottom hole flow pressure is a reservoir pressure, a dynamic reservoir pressure. Separator is end point, while this artificial lift system or this bomb need to deliver, uh, deliver the flow to the separator. Could you need artificial lift to produce flow and generate discharge pressure able to lift to the surface, able to overcome pressure loss, able to overcome wallet pressure in order to move, transfer the flow to the nearest separator or tank, depending on wheel condition or just fluid condition and so on. What the second items here is intake. How the fluid enter to the bomb, you know. There's some intake and we said there is different type of intake, different type of bomb, different type of bomb geometry inside the bomb, other impellers as, as a stage, as a diffusers, uh, uh, depend on the application, fluid condition around the bomb, volumes uh, and, and so on. And the intake, this can be very simple intake, like hole like this, you know. Just only hole like this, small holes which allow fluids to enter to the bomb. But you know, as, as a best practice, it's more always recommended to have some screen over these holes, if it's standard like this, just to help you just to filter it some degrees or something like that, and so on. One of the problem you need just to remember, while if we have time and we go to so troubleshooting and failure analysis, one of the bigger problems for the bomb and system when these screens start to be blocked, 
And in, in many cases, screen plug not only from sand and so, sometimes plug from scale, from flow going. There is a delta B pressure across here and can be half some scale and the scale of close this plug, then the intake will be closed. There is be no fluid will be entered the pump. Second important one is a seal section. Because there is a fluid and the pump drive by the motors. And I cannot connect the motor direct to the pump or to the intake because there is a fluid. And this and high voltage, high ampere, high horsepower electrical motors. It's not an easy, you know, just to connect the direct to the fluid. It will burn the motors and so on, you know. This motor work in very harsh environment, high pressure, high temperatures, high speed. For the standard AC motor running for high speeds, then there is a temperature, there is a lot of condition. The fluids over the pump which lifted here, it's even, you know, the pressure here is sometimes it's a little bit fluctuated, depending on the type of flow. What two-phase flow you have, you know, there is a slugging, there is no slug here in, in that. All that's, you know, small fluctuations in the pressure will affect in the loads downhole, affect on the load, affect on the bearing. And then these seals can be helped how to apply it and so on. What else is the cables? Because the pump is drive by electric submersible motors. And electric submersible motor, it's running downhole in the wells, you know. It's so far from the surface. Then I need a, a source of power. How I transfer source power from surface to downhole? It's usually through the cables and so on. You know. Then at the end, all that's connecting to the tubing if it for all the standards, electric submersible bumping systems. Then at the end, there is an option. You know, since there is an electric cables and power and so. You will find majority of the electric submersible bombing system is equipped with what we call downhole monitoring sensors. Sensor really it's helped a lot, you know, it's monitoring all the conditions downhole, pressure, temperatures, uh, vibrations, and so on. And also you can allow you to control, you know, with the ampere and with the pressure, with the intake, with the flow rates. Uh, you can do a lot of optimization, you know, because this your eye is downhole, you know, how the system is running. Uh, how the pressure around the bomb, how the temperature around the motors, and so on, you know. Then we said there is a chain. Chain here was five main components, cable, pump, take, seal, motor. If one of them have a problem or failed, the rest will not work, okay? We stopped last time in this part, already covered the motor, we covered the intake, the seal, and all of that we cover in a very brief things, in a very principles, in, in, and we said what what's the advantage, what the disadvantage, how it looks like, and so on. Let us today start also with the power cables, the fifth part in the chain, the fifth important part in the chain, because power cable is connecting power from surface to downhole. If you have a well running at ten thousand feet, remember this cable should be. The length of the cable is 10,000 feet. You know, in your home, if you're connecting powers to your um, air conditioning, something like that, you need a big cables. You need something just, you know, to, to withstand the power, the horsepower just required to run your system. And it's just a few meters. What do you think about uh, 10,000 feet or just uh, 2,000 meters, 3,000 meters down hold, you know, cable to connect to drive a motor with 200 horsepower? 150 horsepower and so on, you know. What type of cable I need to do that? This cable is not laying on the ground. This cable is running down hall, it's an important cable. However, if we start to talk about electric submersible pump cables, there is different area in the electric submersible pump system cable using, to, to use a cable. First of all, there is a surface cable while it's connecting all the surface equipment together from transformer to switchboard to junction box to well heads uh, and so on. Then this is what you call surface cable. Cable laid at the surface. This cable pass from surface to downhole. Then there is an area what you call well head feed through cable. Then at the well head, I will show you now in, in a couple of slides. Uh, what's mean feed through? The cable come from surface to downhole. Then what you call feed through cable. It's a difference different configuration or different connection or whatever. 
a main power cable. The power cable is running from surface to downhole, you know. But main power cable also, there is an area, a critical area around the ESP assembly. The ESP assembly is outside the meter is big. The area is sensitive. There is high temperatures uh, around this area and so on, you know. The clearance between the casing and the system itself, assembly, it's low, you know. Then this area is very critical. For that reason, it's usually, it's used a special cable. It's called motor lead cable. Plus, how this motor lead cable is connecting to the motor in this area, what we call boat head. Let me walk you through some, some of all this and, and, and say what's the difference and how it looks like and so on. Then, the main function of the cables, whatever cables, it's carrying current from the motor control from the surface to the down hole motors. Is the main function. There is no any other function for the cables, you know, especially for the standard SESP, you know, for the standard ESP, the cable main function is carry current from the motor controller on the surface, you know, up to the down hole motor, up to this point. Is there is configuration for this motor? Yes. I said, you know, there is a surface cable, there is a motor lead cables, there is a standard cables, there is even in some standard wells the clearance between tubing, coupling, and the casing is very small. Then I need some different configuration of the cable. Usually the cable is available in two types of configuration. Either what you call flat cable or round cable. Flat cable, like this, like this one, you know, these have three conductors right here, and the flat cable is just like this one. Rounded cable, it's like this one. Is, is, is only the cable different in, in, in the shape, in the configuration, or there is some other different parts in the cable? No. The cable, it can be also have some different, config, not only configuration, different sizes. Because the cable transfers different current, different volt. The cable extends from surface to downhole. And there is a current and volt path through the cables. Then there is a, 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 there is a losses so the cable, what we call volt losses, current losses, restrictions, you know. There is, a, if you are studying some electricity, you say there is some resistance to flow, to current flow, to volt flow. Then the cable, it's, it, the cable, it's different in size, should be available different in size. For sure, there is, you know, what we call, when the size is increased, the cost is increased. Then I need to optimize to use the right cable to have the right current to have the right voltage losses through the cables, and so on. What is the main component of the cables? As, as we said, you know, usually the cable have different components. If you look here, you know, for each cables, you see how many components have, you know, out, outers, inners, conductors, and so on. One of the main component of the cables, because this is, looks like the cable, one of the main components of the cable constructions, and the very important, which is from that you can decide it or just you can know what is the cable size, is a conductor, which is just carrying the electric current. This is a conductor. This one is carrying electric current. It's generally made from covers or just some aluminum can be used, depending you know, on the cable application, um, uh, voltage, uh, amperes, and, and so on going through that uh, cable. The conductors also can be solid like this, or can be strand, strands and compacted strands, you know. Strands is just very, like, like the cable in your home, you know, you can find two types of cable, either solid or stranded, and strands can be compacted or just normal. Ones. But you know, usually, high percentage of the people use a solid cable like this. However, it depends on the size of the cable and wire size and on the manufacturing itself and, 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 and the cable used and the one is used and so on. As I mentioned, you know, the cover cables is available in four sizes. What you call size one, size two, size four, size six. This is referred to AWG. AWG, it means American wire gate. You know, it's the standard for the cable diameters. 
say we say okay according to awg the number of cable one uh, what i have number of cable four number of cable two number of cable three however when the numbers is increased that mean the cable size is decreased cable number one the size of these conductors the diameter size of these conductors the diameters it's around 42 millimeters compared to cable number six the diameters of this one it's 21 12, 13 millimeters that means the resistance here is higher for current resistance here that means this one can carry more current if i i required more current the whole and, and running the, the, the motor at high current or just high voltage and so on then cable size one can be used and so on you know select the cable is a very critical what size of the cable and when i can need this size and what is the optimum size i can use remember when the cable size is increased the cost will go dramatically increased because remember you see this size is 52 mil sorry 13 millimeter this size of cable 42 millimeters see how much covers how much weights of covers would be different between this and that and this usually the cable is three phase you know three one not only that even there is what we call around the cable cable is running in the well is running in, in in fluid conditions and then you know i need to protect the cables not only just normal protection like the cable you have in home just only small insulation and so no because the cable running in in, in a very harsh environment in very really difficult environments and and running besides the tubing inside the casing uh, while you are running a hole or pouring or pulling pull out falls there is a tendency of friction between cables and 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 also um, the casing and so on you know there is a bending the well is not even if it's i said the well is vertical usually is not 100 percent verticality 90 percent you know because you study drilling for sure and you know how the drilling can be different you can go a little bit different angle either 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 angles just um, or or, um, or you know just different condition I, I i will not go through drilling condition however you know there is different type of cable difference then one of the main important part of the cable construction is the conductors and the conductor is used to carry the current and the conductor is available according awg to four main size smaller size is a bigger size and, and, and six is a smaller number. Uh, the number six is a smaller size of the cable. What is the second part of the cable? Really, it's the second part and the very important part and need to select very carefully this part. It is a power cable construction and the insulations around the power cables. What type of protection? What type of insulations, you know? This is the core of the cables. After the core, each core of the cable should be insulated from each other, you know, because I need to insulate this and from this, from this, because there is different three, three phase, you know, I, I have to have different insulation for the cables, you know, and the insulation of the cable really it's available in different, in different material and different condition, you know, and so on, you know, like this, you know, you have different materials, different shape, different resistance, uh, uh, based on downhole condition, based on float condition, based on the current, based on the amps, what you are running in hole and, and so on. You know. but then we have, this is covers and we have insulations and we have more than that, you know, just uh, the armor of the cables. What is the armor of the cable? It's the outer material that's surrounding the three conductors. You have three conductors, this is the insulation in the armors. The armor of the cable is surrounding the three conductors. What else, what, what more we have? We have over that's what we call jacket. I like to have also plastic jackets around the, the three cables, you know, just the three insulations, the three armors of the cables, you know. The jacket just to have the first protections for all the three cable around that it's also different have different material of that jacket and so on over that you know the armors outside all that i need to have some steel not only rubber because rubber was pulling and running will be easy to damage you know then i need to have something sort like 
uh, metals, metal protections, you know. Metal protection here, what we call jacket, you know, jacket or just ar uh, sorry, uh, the armor is outside. Ja jacket, this is, is, is the, the, as isolate the three the conductor. Then the armor is the outside one. The armor, it's just a metals and, and different. There is a different type of metal, depend on downhole condition and corrosion environment. For water wells, high salinity wells, high H2S, high S2, uh, CO2, then the armor should be completely different in, in materials and, and metallurgy, what we have and so on. What else, you know? I said also from the power cables, there is what we call, you know, motor lead cables. See this one, this shape is motor lead cables. The motor lead cable is a flat cable like this. And the motor lead cable due to the limited space between the bottom hole assembly and the casing here, what we have, a special power cable should be extended from the motor up to just to cover all the bottom hole assembly up to the tubing, you know, up to the first joint, you know, of the tubing after uh, the bump, you know, then it should be covered all the bottom hole assembly. Then the motor lead cable, MLC, what we call the motor lead cable, is a special power cable that extend past the pump intake and the seal. It's past all the bottom hole assembly. But at the end of the motor lead cable, this is what we call a put head, you know. It's have a special tap. In the end, you know, this is how I connect this to the motor. This, you know, this should be a special tap to connect this to the motor. This is special tap to connect this to the motor is called a put head, you know. And the other end here, you know, after just connecting this to the motor with a put head, this cable, motor lead cable, should be connected to the normal power cables, the rounded cable or flat cable, whatever type I used at the surface, you know. This cable should be what we call spliced to the surface cable. What mean of word spliced? Words price it like I connect two cables together in a very standard way, in, in, in a very special way to avoid any miscommunication, or just uh, to avoid any miscontact points, uh, uh, just uh, to, to, to simulate it like I have a, a lot of insulation, insulation uh, like a jacket, like a rubbers, like uh, also uh, the armors and so on, in order to protect. Uh, all this area or this part. And even in most cases, this area, this part is a is weak point for all the connections and so on. And it's required a specialist to do that. And one of the very important, the, the, the ESP operator while is running in home, it's pay too much attention to that. And each company have a special way, special component, how to connect the, these two together. Connecting the motor lead cables to the motors uh, with, 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 with the things, what we call put head. Put head is available in the market according to the manufacturing in different configuration. There is different configuration. Each have advantage, disadvantage. Each have a certain applications and limitations, you know, and based on your, uh, your application, your bottom hole condition, your bottom, your motor types, uh, your cable types, uh, your conditions, uh, your, your downhole problems, you connect, you, you select the right and the suitable put head, you know. This is just a picture to show you, you know, some put head, what, what we can find in the market. But in the market, there is really a lot, there is a lot of variety of put head and different put head and how it's connected to the motor, how critical this connection and so on. Then power cable applications again, you know. Power cables, application for ESP, you know, it's when I select the power cable and I apply the power cable, I need to remember one point, how to select the power cable, how to, or where is to apply the power cable and so on. One of the very important things for the power cables, while as running and hold, I should keep in mind that when I choose the power cables, it's, it's a voltage drop, should be no more than 30 volt per thousand feet. That's what, what, what does that mean, you know? If I have a, a certain voltage at the surface and I need to reach t this voltage to the motor, for example, if I have, the motor should be run at 
2000 volt, then the volt at the surface should be higher than 2000 volt. Some of this volt, it's, it's lost through the cables. Then in order to minimize, to have high difference in volt between the motor and what I generate in the surface, and what even the, will be the, the, the current losses during that, then the, the, the most recommended and the most applicable motor, you must have a motor with a voltage drop, not more than 30 volt for each thousand feet. For an example, if I have a well produced from 10,000 feet, then the voltage drop across the motor should not be by any means more than 300 volt. That means if the, 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 the current, the motor required to run the motors is, is 2,000 2, volt, then the motor at the surface should be around 2,300. Usually we are choose much less than that, but this is a limitation for you, you know, just to have this one. I choose a pro, uh, the proper profile on the motor based on your clearance, based on the clearance between the casing and tubing, you know, because depend on the, the clearance and the annulus clearance between the casing and tubing, you select either, um, just we can say, round cables or flat cable. Because sometimes if the clearance, clearance is high between casing and tubing, but the voltage drop is high because the current required is high, the voltage required is high, then according to my selection, I found size one cable must be run in the wall. But the size of size one cable from here to here, it's higher, it's bigger than the clearance between the tubing coupling and the case. In this case, I force it to use what you call flat cable. Remember flat cable due to some manufacturing and so, it's a little bit different than this in the cost and some other limitation and insulation system and so on. Then also what I need to have also selecting power cable should be based on your operating condition, how I operate the conductor. What the temperatures around the power cables? What is the, the well pore conditions? What the fluid condition? Is there is any sour gas in the wells like H2S, uh, CO2, uh, high salinity water, and so? How to select not only the conductors, even also the insulators? Sometimes the conductor is okay, then I need to have a very good insulator just to withstand all that problem, all that conditions, and so on. Then this is just an example, you know how to select uh, the cable or power cable. This is a cable size. For example, this size six, size four, uh, size two, and, and, and size different type of size one, you know, just according to manufacturing and, uh, and so on, you know, and, and, and we have uh, different things. Then this just show, you know, if I have a voltage drop 30, how much current I need, just the maximum current can be run for each size of cable. While we are selecting a design system, we'll go through in details for this one. Cable is running just outside the tubing, you know, in order to just reach from surface to the downhole. But I cannot let the cable just to run without, you know, and what to call without control the, the cable, without just fixing the cable with the tubing, because this will be not an easy in the operation, pulling and running and so on. Then, there is some protection for that, what we call cable bands or protectors. Cable bands like this, you know, I need to band the cables with the tubing, I need to fix it, the cable with the tubing. Generally speaking, you know, just best practice, the people usually use sometimes three bands or four bands, depend in type of band, downhole condition. <laughs> it's not expensive, the bands, but it's protect the cable from falling in case you have some problem, in case you have, some, some, some of these cables have uh, really come broken, have some, some different problem you can have. Then usually you have minimum three bands around the, 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 the cable, which is fixing the cable with, with the tubing. And the first band usually is, is, is connecting a few, few feet just after the coupling from top and the bottom and, and one band in the middle minimum. Some, some people use Four, some people use five, depending on condition. Sometimes if it is a little bit critical, the area between tubing, casing, and the size, I force it to use a bigger size because I need it, according to design, need to use a bigger size and the clearance is 
is very critical between the size, the, 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 the cables, and the casings. And I need to use a special protectors like this, especially at, sorry, especially at the coupling, because the coupling, it's the biggest outside the inter in the tubing string is the coupling here. Then the cable, when it's passed to the coupling, then the area here will be a very critical area. Then I need to protect the coupling with this protector. This in, in some deviated well, or will have some certain of deviation and so on. I need to use this protector. There are different type of protector, different type of, of, of cable bands and so on. But I like just to, to highlight this to you because don't forget, when you design your system, when you select your system, don't forget small things, you know. Because small things like this, if you have the clearance, if you start to, to design systems, select the bump, select the motor, select the cable, and you say, okay, cable size one is good for me because there is a clearance between the tubing and casing and for cable size one. But the well, it's a little bit deviated, you know, and the clearance is small. And if you forget to do that, and while you are running in hole, you can get damage. The cable can be damaged with the casing. For that reason, try to look to each point while you are designing your system, not only the major. Some, some engineer looking only to the major's component, major components like how to size a bump, how to select the motor, the seal, and so on. And then when you start to run in wells, run in hall, start to fail, start to have some problem, because you know they are not using very just you know adequate numbers for bands, and the cable start to be broken or band broken. They are not protect the cables here, and the cables scratch it. One is running hole, and maybe you know you just you know you can have a short circuit and so. On. However, I like just to recommend to you look to all uh, points in your design. Don't forget the small things. Usually, the problems, the failures come from small things in your downhole equipment and condition. Okay. Uh, the power cables also, you know, it's surface power cable. Surface power cable to connect all these pieces together. Surface power cable, when I start to come from the well side, it's connecting to this device, which is called junction box, and connecting to transformers, connecting to switchboard, and so on. Then the cable laid in the surface, what we call surface power cable. The surface cable, it's just connect all the surface connection together. Now let us move to the surface equipment. Surface component. We already covered downhole. We already covered downhole components. It's very important to select the right component, the right downhole component. It is very important to know your downhole condition. It's very important to predict what change you will be in your downhole condition, downhole parameters. If the water cut will increase with time. Is uh, the wells or just the reservoir under water injection, and there is a possibility of some water injection breakthrough, and can be have some CO2 or just have some h However, you need to design not only for the to, for today or for current. Try to design, select your downhole equipment for the future of the well, for the life of the wells. You know, don't select for current wells, for current condition and, and so on and try to consult with your reservoir engineer, with your lab, and so on. However, what is this at the surface? These are cables, the power cables, this is all head. The power cable is laid down from the surface up to the motors. And when we'll start to the surface here like this, I need to have a special wall head because the cables come out of the well and should be bathed, should be penetrated pass through the wheel head, how the cable can pass through the wheel head? While I have the wheel head is a protection, is a safety device, is protecting my wells, you know, and I should have a seal in the wheel, in the wheel head in order to prevent any gas can be come from the wheel fluid spill, uh, all, all that. Then I need to have special wheel heads in this area. Not only that, also I, I, need, I need to have another device, what called junction box. I will go through each one in details in the next slide, Samsung. But I like you to remember in the surface connections, this is can be the minimum requirement as a surface. So we'll add junction box, transformers. I can have one or two transformers. 
They can have one transformer or two transformer, depend in the voltage at the well site. How much volt at the well site, how much volt I need to run my motors. Based on that, I, I can have only one transformer or two transformer as well. Plus, I need to have not only can be variable speed, what we call switch port controllers, surface controllers. These surface controllers can be normal surface controller on and off, can be variable speed controllers, there's different conditions, plus transformers and just circuit breakers to connect to the power to the system or, and if I need to ask what each component and how it looks like, what's the function, each component and so on. Let me start with the well head. What the well head has looked like? Why when we start to come to each artificial lift, we must go and look to each, each well head. Because artificial lift for each type of artificial lift requires a special well head in order just, you know, to allow the system to run at each function. What is the ESP well head? ESP well head, it is the highest point in the in your strings between tubing, in case this is the highest point while the tubing is connected. The well head for the ESP, there is two type well head of ESPs. Generally speaking, there is two types. There is more than two types, but however, as standards condition, all can be under these categories of this type. The two categories or two type, one, one of them is called low pressure well head, like this. Low pressure will hit like I have a flange, it will hit flange, and so and the K will just come from down on and bath through this one, you know. It's there is no 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 just uh, what you call special connection here or penetrated and bath and connecting to the surface connection. Then it should not, you know, it should not be used if there is any pressure since the cable is bath and it will be whole. If there is a pressure here, the pressure will be leaking and escaped from that then the low pressure well head should be not used for any well head pressure if the casing have any well head pressure, even it's one or two PSI, three PSI, whatever you have. It's not required what you call feed through. Does the cable itself is passed through that. I will show you what mean of feed through mandrel. The cable is passed from this one. But however, since we are working oil and gas, safety is our main concern. Safety and hazard and condition is one of our main channels for, for, the, for the oil and gas industry. Safety, safety, safety. Then we need to have some insulation. Usually have a rubber insulation like this one around the cable to insulate. Sometimes you can have a very few gas, very few something, you know, just to, to prevent, you know, this to leak. Then you have the first connections, the first type, it's what you call low pressure wall head. What is the second type? and it's more more common use. It's high pressure well head. However, this one is, is limited use, you know. It's used for very shallow wells, low, no gas in the well, sometimes shallow water wells, you know, and so on. But it's, it's, it's more cheaper than this one, you know, because for high pressure one, this type of well head have what you call feed through to assure a positive seal throw the cable, throw the wheel hand around the cable. This is what we call the feed throw mandrel. This one, this is a power cable down hole. The power cable down hole is stopped here because the power cable down hole is not stopped here. You know? it's, it's just continue until to the surface, then I connecting to surface. But here, you know, the bottom hole, just the bottom hole cable, the down hole cable stopped here with a special connection called lower big tails. This lower big tail special connection here and the top cables, the top part here, start to connect from here. And through this special well head, high pressure well head, this is what we call, there is a mandrel, which allow you to connect the top cable and power cables through a special connections here. There is different type, you know, different type of, of, of this connection. Can be with angle like this, can be uh, 90 degree angle like this. There are different condition, different type, different connections based on the weather condition, based on the cable size, based on the cable types, uh, based on the well head types, and so on. You know. However, you can have different type, different condition. Safety here, as, as I mentioned before, is the primary concern when selecting the well head. When you start to select the well head, look first for, for safety. 
If there is any hazards can be come from here, no. If there is any chance for any other, I will go directly for the high pressure wall heads. You know, because this is high pressure wall head with a few thousand, just more in, in dollars can be saved, the wall can be saved, the life of the operators can save the company and a lot of stuff. Safety is the main concern when you are selecting the well head and so on. What is about Since safety is a main concern, and I mentioned before, safety is our first priority in the oil and gas industry. While before to go to the safety, you got, sorry, before to go to the well, you need just to put safety in your front, safety first. For that reason, as a part of the surface equipment, <coughs> for the ESP, we have what we call junction box. What is a junction box and what is used? Keep in mind, one of the main important for the junction box is as a safety. If you look here, junction box is a very simple, very simple tools, very simple device, whatever you can name it, you know. Junction box, the power cable just after came out of the well, either depend whatever types of the well head, the first connection between the power cables and my surface connection is what we call junction box. There is input cable and output cables. This is different than this. This is input cables connecting the cable coming from downhole up to this injection box. The output cable is just connecting the powers or just connecting junction box to the surface connection. Inside the junction box, you can find this as a one of, as a one of the design, you know. There is a different design of junction box. Sometimes you have some fuses, just uh, some protections inside some other things. Sometimes you have two tabs like this. Uh, you are connecting from this tab, uh, one, one cable, top tab, other cable, bottom tabs, and between this tab and tab, there is what we call some fuses rating for a, a certain rating powers and, and amp go through just for more protection. But however, you know, what's the function of the junction box? And what's the junction box surface? And some people named as a vent box. Yes, it's junction box and you can name it also as a vent box. What's their function and what's doing? It's allow for any gases to vent to atmosphere. From where is coming gas? I am in the surface, you know, and I am out of the wells. There is no gas, but remember, there is a cables and cable running in the wells. Remember the, the cable protection insulation? I said they have armors, they have insulations, and they have different connection down holes and so on. It's the gas is easy to escape through any small things. And there is a chance of the gas can be escaped through the power cables. If there is no junction box here and the power cable connect direct to the switch port, what will happen if there is some small volume of gas is just escaped and accumulated inside the inside my sorry inside my, my, my switch port junction box or variable speed? If the gas accumulated here, here there is on and off, there is a switches, there is a contactor. Then there is on and off for powers and under power. There is some chance could be some spark come out. If the sparks come out with the gas, what will be happening? There is a, a very high explosions can be happening in this, in this area. And, so on. and not only that, I need just to measure it sometimes just to know what's going on, especially some when I start to do some failure analysis, especially if I have some downhole failure and I need just to, to predict where is the failures. I need just to, to, to measure the current. How is the current? What is downhole current? What is the resistance of the cable? If one of the cable broken, if one of the cable have short circuits, then I need to use the currents downhole. How to use the current downhole if I have some, I don't have some separation. Then the junction box, I can open this box and this will be inside the box uh, what I have. Then this can be provide easy accessible test point. You can test it whatever you have for the cable and the current, and just you can predict it what's going on. 
on downhole. What the other main parts in downhole contain in surface equipment? One of the other very important part is a transformer. Why I need transformers as a surface? You say that we have bullets, we have junction books, I have transformers. I can have one transformer or two transformers. As a, sometimes, in some cases, maybe I don't need transformer. If the power on the volt reach it to the well condition, it is a required volt to run the motor plus the, the volt, uh, the, the volt uh, losses in the cable. This is not common use, but yes, you can found this if you have this available as both side, but the majority is not available. Then I need to have two transformers. What is a transformer and what is the function of the transformer? The transformer is used to convert incoming powers, incoming voltage to required voltage. Then transformer, the main function of transformer, it's convert volt to volt from one value of volt to another value of volt. If convert volt from high volt to low volt, we name this step down transform, step down volt. It's reducing the volt. Then the step down transformer, it's a transformer used to reduce the volt to the required volt. But sometimes the volt reach to the volt side, it's low volt. Then I need transformer to increase this volt to the high volt required to running the motor plus the volt losses in the queue. Then what this is called step up transform. Then I have step down transformer and I have step up transform. How to select transformer and what transformer I should use in action. However, transformer selects based on different parameters, you know. The main, uh, the main parameters uh, just you need to keep in mind while you are selecting your uh, transformer is the power rating. Power rating in, 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 in anything, usually is in kilovolt amps and so on. What is the primary and secondary volt? What is the volt? Primary volt is high or low? What is the secondary volt is high or low? I need to transfer to convert from this volt to that volt. I need step up transformer or step down transformer. Even if it's step up or step down transformer, what's the value? I need to step up from 1,000 volt to 2,000 volt, or I need to step up from 1,000 volt to 3,000 volt, or I need to step up from 380 volt to 3,000 volt, or 1,100 volt. Same for step down. I have a volt, 11,000 K volt came from some turbine or something like that. I need to step down to how much volt? 1,000 volt. 2000 volt and so on. Tab here, tab arrangement. Tab, tab, that's mean, you know, each transformer should have different tab, different flexibility for changing the volt, you know. Usually there is, there is a single tab transformer can change from this value to this value. But there is some transformer and a lot of transformer can change from this value to this value, or from this value to this value, or from this value, one fixed input value, to either this value or this value or this value. For example, I have transformer, you can step up from 480 volt to either 1000, 1500 or 2000 volt. Then I have variety of that. This allow me, if I want to change the downhole motor, don't need, I don't need to change the transformer. Because you know, when you change sometimes, you, you need to recycling your downhole equipment based on the well conditions, based on the, in, in, in the flow condition, productivity, or the work condition, whatever you have, uh, uh, fluid gradient change, and so on. Sometimes maybe you are oversized or undersized your equipment, then maybe I need to change down all. In order to not change service equipment, you need to have service equipment adequate for a certain wide range of change. What else you have in the service? Transformer, and I said, I could have two transformer or one transformer. Two transformer, if there is some transformer came from overhead area or just high pressure, high, high voltage, and then just connecting to our my first connection, then second transformer to increase the volt to the required. 
And what is a motor controller? It's all the controllers I have and for my surface equal. The controller system. Controller system is a very important in the brain. You can consider controller system is your brain for your system. Is your hand to control. Like while you are driving your car, you are you, are, you, you have your direction, you have your all your conditions in, in, in front of you, you can control your system, you know. You have the monitoring in front of you, you can see what's going on and so on. What is a controller system? And so for electric submersible bombing system, there is three main type controllers. What is these three main types of control? Other, under each type of this controller, there is subcategories, sub, sub different types, you know, of control. For example, the first and very simple controllers, it's what you call switch port. Switch port, what is a switch port? And why I put between brackets is fixed speed. If you look, we have a switch port, soft starter, variable speed, and then in, in front and just after switch port or soft starter, I said fixed speed. Fixed speed, that's mean, you know, I run my system, my pump at a single speed, at one speed, the feeding to the system, it's just only one speed, one hertz. When you are running your current, your system, either you run with, for example, you know, 50 hertz or 60 hertz, this is convert to speed for the motor, then I run my motor, for example, at 2,000 RPM, 1,500 RPM, 3,000 RPM, and so this is a fixed speed. Then all the time, I cannot change the speed if I use what we call a switch port. Because switch port is just a simple on and off switch. It's switch on and off, you know. Just you have some more protection inside. It's protecting the cable and, and, and the motor from overload, underloads, you know, some protector re relays and so on. Some monitoring sometimes, you know, just you can have some amps and amp charts how the amps, you know, how the motor is running and what the amp was drawn by the motors, if the amp fixed or not. Just we use this just for, for monitoring troubleshooting and just, you know, uh, just to see how the downhole conditions are running. But however, the very simple controller is the switch port. And the switch port is a very simple device. It's on and off switches and usually used for just protect the downhole, especially the motors and the cable. We have another controller, what we call soft starter switch port. Soft starter with switch port like what? When I start any system and any current conditions, try to look to the amp. The starting current usually it's very high because the starting torque for the motor in order to move from static to dynamic, it's very high. Starting current is very high, can affect in my surface power generations, can be affected my surface equipment, can be affecting the motor shaft and torque can be broken. For example, especially if you have high viscous fluid and, and the torque will be very high at start. But if I start smooth, then I start with a low speed, low smooth, then will be give me more more running life. Then the voltage to the motor can be lowering during the startup only, you know, and, and so on. Uh, what the other, and, and just maybe uh, more than 70, 60% of, of, of the ESP wells is running what we call variable speed drive. Variable speed drive, it's just a switch port, a controllers, equipped with a variable speed controller, which can allow you to change the motor speed. Change the motor speed via changing the hertz, the required frequency, the hertz going to the motor. I can run my motor, for example, at 50 hertz. At 50 hertz, if the motor speed is 2000 RPM, I can change from the surface from 50 hertz to 40 hertz. Instead to run at 2,000 RPM, then the motors can be run at 1,500 RPM. Or I can increase to 60 Hertz from, uh, then the motor can run from, um, instead to run with 2,000 RPM, can be run with 3,000 RPM. Is this important? Why I need that? Let's, let me just, you know, explain a little bit more in the next coming slides and, and so on.
This is just the pictures and the small for about the standard, very simple switch port. Then the switch port controls the motor, as I said before, and provide overload and underload protection plus the monitoring. Then protecting against overload and underload for the motor from winding from the motor. Because if the motor running is overload or underload, it can be easy to just to burn and so on. Also protect, you know, this from underload, from underload of, of the motor just to prevent adequate cooling because underload, if you run the motor underload, then production will be less, then the flow bus to the motor will be less, then the motor will be have low cooling around the motor. It's a very simple techniques, very simple shape for this one. You have just on and off switch. You can uh, isolate the power on and off like this. You can have some alarms here, you know, what you call, if you have this alarm, and uh, if, if you saw this, you will give you this alarm that there is some underload, uh, overload or just underload, or just you can have push button here for stop or, or running the wheel and so on. You have some also some read out for the current uh, here and can, you can read sometimes uh, the volt and, and the current for each phase and uh, phase and so on. What's the advantage for, uh, for what is a disadvantage? Because switch volt is very simple, but there is a, a, some disadvantage or limitation. You know, starting, it's required extremely high, high amps and high torque in order to run the system. Does not allow bump for matching or fine tuning change of production. I cannot change the speed. If the downhole condition change, production change, I cannot change the speed. Then I cannot change the, will, the, the system capabilities. Then I have only one fixed speed. One production can be running for this one. Uh, flow control, I cannot be, you know, control my flow out from the wells. The motor controllers, as I said again, and I repeat it, I summarized here, you know, is the motor controller is the brain of the switch port, fuel switch port. The motor controllers inside the switch port, it's monitoring the voltage and current and so on. Can help you to set up automatically restart. The well. For example, if I said, you know, this well, I need to stop and start because, you know, have some downhole condition, have flow rates, low flow rate and so I need to put the well on timer, then I have need automatically start and stop the wells. Then this can be allow you to go, uh, you know, automatically start, you can adjust based on time, based on a lot of factors you can have and so on. It's protecting your motor for power fluctuations and for what fluctuation, you know. Some, some of them have some communication. You can connect to your SCADA system and data logging capability while you can see from your office what you have, but you cannot control. You can see data, you can monitor the well, you cannot control. You, know? you can have some auxiliary input data like downhole sensor and so on. What is the variable speed drive? This is one of the very important and here is a very good tools. If you have at the well site, it's allow you to control the well, allow you just to have more flexibility to change your parameter based on your condition and so on. It's allow you just to, to extend your running life. The variable speed drive Control the speed or the frequency of the motor. This is the main function. It's control the speed, control the speed or the frequency. Because if you control the frequency, you control the speed of, of your motor. By varying speed or just the frequency what you have of the motor, it's allow you to adjust the change in well condition. For example, if I, I have the well running at 50 Hertz, and uh, just uh, based on the bump card, uh, bump performance, sorry, bump performance curve and so on, and production capability, this well produce 2,000 barrels per day. What if the wells depleted and produce only 1,000 barrels per day? And the system now is running to produce what we call 2,000 barrels per day. Then how I can change? With a variable speed drive, I need to change the, the motor speed Consequently, if you change the motor speed, you change the pump speed. Change the pump speed, then you change the production 
the bump should be left, the bump displacement, what you call, in order to match with the well production also. Instead to use a, a, a soft starter with a switch port, the variable speed already equal to the soft starter. You can, can start your well in a very soft way, in a very low speed, in a very low frequency, which can extend the running life of the motor shaft, can reduce all the mechanical stresses over your shafted of the motors and, and, and the seal and all the other. It's protect the downhole equipment from under and over current. If there is undercurrent, overcurrent, I can adjust and, and rebalancing using this and, and so on. This is the surface equipment and downhole equipment. But however, you know, for oil and gas industry, especially, there is a lot of what we call some accessories. It's some it's sometimes essential accessories. Sometimes, you know, I need these accessories for just to overcome some downhole problem, to increase the performance of my system and so on. These accessories, you know, it's not a part of the chain of downhole equipment. What is the accessories, what's the additional equipment maybe you found uh, with your downhole ESPSM? Maybe you found one of them, two of them, maybe you not found any of this one. But however, these accessories you can find and each one have some benefits of some application and so on. For example, downhole sensors. Currently speaking, really, if you went to maybe more than 70% of the ESP wells is equipped with what we call downhole sensors. Downhole sensor measured for you continuous in the pressure, temperatures, uh, uh, motor uh, vibrations, uh, what's going on downhole, uh, uh, all, all, all that parameters continuous give to your reading as such, which allow you just, you know, to have a better control, better optimization for your downhole condition. There is what we call the check and pleat valves or check valves. Why I use check valves or non-return valves for ESP? I don't need something to go down, you know just to back to, to the way. Remember, ESB is a centrifugal bump. And uh, when the motor is turning, is turn is a seal, seal is rotate to the, is the intake, the intake rotate to the bump, the bump produces the flow, the flow going to the surface. Then all is open, all connecting to the surface to each other, okay? What if I have my bottom hole pressure, for example, my fluid levels at just over the bump with about 200 feet, 300 feet. It's far away from the surface with about, if the well 5,000 feet, the bump dips at 5,000 feet. If the fluid level, for example, at 4,000 feet, then no fluid in the casing up to 4,000 feet. But while the bump is running, there is a fluid inside the tubing up to the surface, plus well head pressure. For any reason, if you have some power shutdown, power problem, you stop the wheel for any reason, something happened for the wheel and the wheel stops, what will happen for the fluid inside the tubing? The fluid inside the tubing, if there is no non retain valve, downhole or a check valve, what will happen? Then the flow will go down, will move down. Then if the flow will move down, will move in the reverse the directions of the motors and, and the bump turn. You know, the, if the bump turn in one direction, when the flow is going down, the, all the bump impellers and will, will going in the, in, the, in the other direction, in the reverse directions. What happened if you are restarted the motor while the bump is going in this condition? The bump stop, fluid inside the tubing will start to go down, because you need to collide with the fluid inside the annulus, fluid inside the annulus will go up and the fluid inside the tubing will go down and will not stop unless we reach the level, the same level like, like YouTube, you know, with the same level of the fluid inside the tubing, with the same level of the tubing in the case, and this case will stop. But if we are not stopped because it's still in initially, you stop the well due to any problem, any, any reason or problem, power shut down and, and so on, and the power automatically back again and so on, and the fluid is going down, and when you start the fluid going down, it's rotating the bump in reverse rotation, 
if you start to continuous like this, will go in reverse rotation. If you start the unit, the unit will go to run in the standard rotation, then the, the shaft of the bump, the motor of the, of the seal will be twisted. Then you have two torques, one torque, one try to run the motor, the shaft in one direction, the other torque of the flow going down, start to run the motor in the other direction. The motors and shaft or just one piece of the shaft along the old bottom wall assembly, the weakest point, especially the coupling, the connection can be broken. In order to avoid that, they are running in for the well, especially is faced with this problem or have a tendency, but we have that problem with what we call non-return valve or check valve. It can be run at any place near to the pump, above the pump or near just, or just in, in, in your tubing system. It's just to protect the system. But what happened if I run my walls with a check valve? And for any reason, I have downhole failures and I need to pull out full my, my equipment. The tubing in this case is full with the float. And according to all the regulations of oil and gas, safety and so on, I cannot pull the tubing wet. What does that mean? You pull the tubing with oil and where does the oil will go? All this oil will spill and the rig float. It's unsafe completely. Then they run what we call a drain valve. A drain valve will be in the top of the check valve in case I have some failures in the downhole equipment and they have the well equipped with a drain valve, uh, sorry, well equipped with a check valve and they need to pull out for Then I open the drain valves with, there is a different technique how to open the drain valve in order to open a communications between the drain valve, between the tubing and, and the casing and allow the flow in the tubing to go in the casing until it will be stabilized and so on, then I start to plot. Sometimes I use backers. Backer, you know, the applications is different application of the backers and so on. Since I use backer, then I need to have special backer to have a feed through. Just the cable should be passed from this backer, because the backer will be in the top of, the, of my bottom wall assembly. And the cable must be passed from the back. Then I must have a special cables to pass from this back. And sometimes I have a backers. I, I have uh, this backer at the top of the well, and I have also gas. Then I need to have a certain bypass through the backer for the gas. Then a special type of backer must be used with the ESP equipment and so on. This cable penetrated at the surface. It's essential if I use a well head, a high pressure well head. Sometimes I use injection line along with the ESP and just to inject down all chemicals uh, to just whatever whatever the purpose of the injection down hole, you know, I, I read in, in some areas injecting fresh waters, you know, in some area like in, 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 in some field in Algeria, for example, you know, the down hole salinity for the water is very, very, very high. And it's, uh, there is some crystals of salt down hole in order just to, to dilute that, they, they inject fresh waters. In order to inject fresh water, you need to have some injection line for surface to, to water. And sometimes around what we call white tube. Because remember, for the ESP assemblies, I cannot pass with any tool through the ESP. What if I need to do downhole monitoring conditions, reperforation? I need to access my, my, my formations. What I need to know, this is one of the good advantage for the ESP system. While the tubing in the top of the ESP is free, then since the tubing from the top of the ESP up to the surface is free, if I do some bypass at the ESP and I make like a I bypass with a free tubing, then this gives me the accessibility to access below my ESP assemblies and so on. This is just a shape of what you call bypass or U-tube. It's a very important really tools and so on. Bypass or U-tube at the end, just above the bottom hole assembly, I can use some device like this, a very simple, very simple device, small device. The input here is just one connection to the tubing, my tubing string. The output here, we have two connections. You can have two connections like this. One side of this connection, you can connect in your bottom hole assembly, your ESP bottom hole assembly, the other sides will be free like this. 
not in order this size to be free like that because the Kutumola assembly is connecting here. The fluids is produced from this assembly going to the tube. If there is no non-return non-check valves here, then the fluid will be circulate, usually will go to low pressure. Then I must have here what we call non-return check valves, any type of check valve. It's retrievable, whatever you have. What's the function of this bypass for that? The function of white tube or, or bypass, it's, uh, it's allow you to allow for pro production logging, allow you just to run here and do any production logging against the tube. You can run what you call coil tubing and do some, any, any acetizing, uh, any cleaning, uh, whatever you have, you can clean down all, sampling, run whatever. You give to you accessibility to bottom hole conditions and bottom hole uh, uh, below you, your, your ESB uh, assemblage. Summary for the ESP component. What's the ESP and what's the summary for the ESP? We said the bump is a pump usually is used, it's produced to, to produce floats. It's the main target of the bump, to produce float, which convert the shaft rotation into flow and lifted production flow to the surface based on the impeller and the fuser type, based on the number of impeller and the fuser state, what we call state. Then I have to take below the bump, which the intake is a fluid entry point. Ports can be either gas separators, if there is a gas, or can be just normal standard. Intake. I have a seal, it's a protection, or just seal uh, element, which protects the motors and absorb the thrust chamber uh, uh, loads, uh, thrust load from, uh, to reach to the motor and so on. Motor converts the electricity into shaft rotation, transfer to the bump in order to rotate the bump. Sensor, it's just to sense the downhole, pressure, temperature, all the parameters, cable to connect the power, electricity from the surface to downhole and to surface equipment, plus controller, like a variable speed drive, or switch port controllers and so on. For design and selection, you know, I prefer to just stop here and start next time because this will take a long time to do and I need all of you to be a little bit fresh, you know, while design and selecting the system. Next time we can have uh, more, almost we can say 30 to 40 minutes going through the design and then you can switch to the other artificial lift. I would like to thank you and Joanna, I can stop here. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mahamal Ghali for this enlightening session. Now we'll move to answering some questions um, asked by our honorable audience. Um, in ESP wells with high gas, the gas separator alone is not enough. Uh, should we install an advanced gas handler? Yes. Yes, because uh, I will try to explain later on, you know, uh, uh, gas control, how to compete with the gas. Yes, for sure. For sure, you know, if, if the gas separator is not enough, gas handler is, is, is really is give a very good performance. Not only gas handler, there is different, uh, different type of, of, of just downhole bumps or just configuration of, of uh, the impeller and diffuser. Yes, uh, I need just a separator with a gas handler. I can handle a very high percentage of gas through the ESP. And this one was the advantage of the ESP, you know, because uh, over the positive displacement uh, system, you know, you can handle really very high gas uh, ratio, especially with this new technology like uh, gas handling. Yes, it's for sure, it's, it's you can handle, you can do that. Okay, another question says, uh, what can we do to prevent the cable armor from corroding? Yes, from, to prevent this from corroding, you know, uh, usually uh, if there is a corrosion tendency, I need to select the right cable arms because there is different armors, you know, uh, starting from mono, from monos, you know, armors, you know. Yes, it's expensive and so on, you know, and depend on downhole condition, downhole corrosions, what, what type of corrosion you have? What condition you have? What it, it, do you have H2, H2S? What H2S? How much percentage you have CO2? You have some waters. How to protect that, you know? 
Some other people, you know, said they can run from time to time, some chemical batch, but really it's not work efficient, as they said. Some other people will say, okay, maybe I can have some more insulation in this one. But really, uh, it's, 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 it's a challenge to select the right armors, the right cables to withstand this corrosion, to withstand, to extend the running light, because the criticals, and it's important, you know. There is, there is some, you know, some technology, but very expensive technology to do that, you know. And, and really, it's, it's not an easy, you know. But changing the armor material, armor um, type of metallurgy, it's one of the first choice for that. Okay, yeah. another question says, what's benefit of, what's the benefit of low pressure wellhead? In which condition are they used? Yes, the benefits of low pressure wellheads, it's cheap. First of all, the cost, it's very cheap. Second, it's reduce the operation at the well site while we are installing or retrieving the bundle joints. Sorry, the, 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 the well heads and, and the ESP, you know, because to run with high pressures, you know, you need to have a certain what you call lower pigtails, you have upper pigtails, you have feed through, you have a special well head. But sometimes I used the ESP for very shallow water ESP, uh, water wells. There is no gas. And, 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 and very shallow wells, you know, 1,000 feet, 2,000 feet sometimes, or there is no gas and water wells, or very high uh, viscosity uh, ESP, there is really almost uh, dead oil, there is no gas, uh, uh, there is no any even a chance for gas to come out, and I can use. Is it cheap? As a capital investment, it's cheap, uh, just reducing the operation, just uh, the work requirement to retrieve and to install the cable in this area. Plus, uh, sometimes, you know, the high pressures, if we, we back to the high pressure, the lower part of the high pressures uh, cable are to call lower big tails. The lower big tail, if I have a gas and high pressure gas, gas with sour gas, uh, sometimes there is, is effect and eroded this area and created some problem and some short circuit in this area. It can be a source of problem. But however, as I mentioned before, safety is a concern in selecting your well head for your ESP, for ESP. Put safety first, and then based on that, I put my, 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 my operating cost and my capital cost later on. Okay. Okay, next yeah. question. Um, how do positive seals work in high pressure well head and why are they required? No, sorry, sorry again, I not catch the first one. How what? How do positive seals work in high pressure well head and why are they required? Positive seal, you, you are mean for surface or down? Or, I don't know. Because, you know, positive seals you know it's, it's if, if you talk about surface equipment for low pressure i need to have positive seal it's just a rubber band rubber band around special type with a special configuration install around the cable at the surface just to prevent any chance of if there is some vapors some gas because if even if there is a water will be a vapors and so on then i need to put some what you call positive seals around so low pressures will hit kids. Okay, next question. Um, can we run ESP without check and bleeder valve? Yes, we can do. Yes, we can do run with ESP as a check and bleeder. I tell you, based on your bottom hole condition, based on your well condition, based on how to run your, your, your wells, uh, what is expected problem from your wells, yes, you can do. Okay, uh, someone says, what's the difference between bleeder valve and drain valve? Um, can we run them together? You know, how to run this, you know, bleeder with, 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 with a check valve, it, it's not easy. You can do it, but it's not easy, you know, bleeder and, and, and the check valve together, you know. But usually the bleeder should be in the, in the top of the check valve, you know, not below the check valve. The top of the check valve, 
and it's not common used. You know, it's not common use. It's used for a special condition, some special conditions, and so on. I can choose some picture next time. What, 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 what the inside configuration for each between between these and then what will be the difference? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's about it for the questions today. It was a pleasure having you today on Cleopatra, Dr. Mohammed Gharib. Thanks for joining us. I'm very glad I was able to attend one of your lectures again. Um, this was definitely a very insightful session. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in with us today. Thank you, Joanna. Thanks for all of you.